Good morning all. This is the PWM5 solar charge controller which started life as a project, an electronics project, and then it became a product which I sold. And I designed it about five years ago I suppose and was selling it for about four years and in total about 900 units got sold. So is there anything that I would do differently if I were to start manufacturing this again? Well, there is one, and it's the LED disable feature. Now normally, while the battery is charging, the LED on the charge controller flashes in a sequence. So, one, two, and then lots of short flashes, which tells you the voltage. So it's telling me the voltage is about 12.9. It's a little bit higher than that in reality. And then when the battery has reached target voltage, like this one out in the garden has, 13.5 volts, the LED on the charge controller is essentially on all the time, but it's flickering. And that's an indication that pulse width modulation is taking place. Now I thought it would be a good idea if there was a facility to disable the LED altogether. And so I put in the LED disable mode. But there's no physical push button on here. I didn't think a push button underneath this plastic coating would be very reliable. I thought sometimes it might shrink so much that it would hold the push button in all the time. So I implemented a software switch. And this is how it works. When you first apply power to the controller, the LED comes on for two seconds, then it goes off, and then after a short delay, it will start flashing to indicate the voltage. So two flashes for 12 volts and the decimal, which is about 12 and a half volts. Now, if you apply power and during that two second on period, you remove the power again, then the next time you connect it, it comes on, but that's it. The LED now doesn't function at all. The LED is disabled. It's in disabled mode. Now, I felt that this was reasonably intuitive to disable the LED, you turn it off during that initial boot phase. To enable the LED, you leave it on during that initial boot phase. That was the switch mechanism. So it's functional, it works, but it seems it wasn't very intuitive. And it's actually quite easy to disable the LED without meaning to. If you initially connect the charge controller rather hesitantly, plug it in and then change your mind, that's it. That's the LED disabled. And a lot of people were getting the charge controller into this disabled mode and then thinking it's broken and contacting me and asking me why it's not working. So this became a technical support problem and the problem just came up again and again and again. People asking the same question, the LED doesn't work, why not? Now the feature is documented in the manual that I sent out with every unit. Here's the uh, LED enable disable section. And I even put in a troubleshooting section problem. The LED has stopped working and disconnecting the battery hasn't fixed it. But this didn't really seem to help. Nobody reads manuals after all, do they? Now, amusingly, the fix for my LED isn't working is simply to disconnect the power and then reconnect it. It's that classic fix for pretty much everything that has a microcontroller in it. Reboot it. But the plot thickens because there's an additional problem um, which I found it very difficult to overcome. This one outside is working, it's modulating, but the LED is not on, it's in disable mode. And if I disconnect the power and then reapply it, it doesn't fix it. Let's try it again, disconnect it, reapply it, and nothing's happened. So you could understand someone thinking, well, it has definitely broken. What's actually happening in this instance is that power coming from the solar panel is actually keeping this powered up. So when I disconnect power from the battery, the charge controller is still receiving power, but actually from the solar panel. So now I'm in a difficult situation where I can only actually reboot this thing by disconnecting both the battery end and the solar panel end. Now it's completely lost power. If I reconnect the battery end, it now does reboot and it's now modulating. It's dropping away because the uh, solar panel is not connected and the battery voltage is dropping down. 
So the manual had to include this additional piece of information on re-enabling the LED. It says here, to reactivate LED operation, disconnect the charge controller from the battery at any time other than during the two second period. Please note, disconnect the battery clamps at dawn, dusk, or when skies are overcast. There could be some pretty big sparks if you connect during full sun. Well, that was really covering the fact that uh, it doesn't always work reliably if you disconnect the power when there's sunshine on the solar panel. It only works if it's done when there's no light on the solar panel. And in the troubleshooting section, the problem was the LED has stopped working and disconnecting the battery hasn't fixed it. Solution, this can happen when there's power coming from the solar panel. Cover the solar panel and try disconnecting the battery again. Or wait until dark and disconnect the solar panel. The LED function will be restored. But it's all too complicated. And I added quite a lot of additional code to try and detect this problem. There's uh, software in there which tries to determine when it's not running on battery power, when it's running on solar panel power, which is coming in here. And sometimes it works. I think it's worked there. When I reapply the power, yes, that's rebooted. But it doesn't always work. Like the one outside in the garden, that one isn't detecting it. And this problem actually caused people to send these units back. I had about 12 of these sent back to me in a jiffy bag saying, please, can you test it? It doesn't work. The LED doesn't come on. And they'd sent them to me without even contacting me and asking me what the problem might be. And so, of course, I tested them. All but one were absolutely fine. And then I had to send them back. And of course, that was at my own cost. And in fact, here is the only one that was sent back where the LED had actually failed. And I've written LED intermittent on there. It actually had a faulty LED in it. Now, that's not to say that this is the only charge controller that ever failed. Uh, it isn't. There are others that uh, fail quite a lot more spectacularly than this one. But I'll cover that in uh, another episode on faults and failures. Now, out of the dozen or so that were returned to me, uh, one or two people, as I remember, actually said, I've lost confidence in the product. I'd like a refund. And so I did refund them. But all this trouble because of not a fault, but what I thought was a useful feature. And this really is its use. Uh, the current consumption when the LED is indicating voltage, in other words, flashing occasionally, is an average of one milliamp. The current consumption when the LED is turned off permanently is 650 microamps. I thought that was a useful feature to reduce the current by that small amount. And one person had one of these installed on a narrow boat and he said that the uh, flashing blue light was keeping him awake at night. So disabling it was very useful because then he could sleep. So at least one person found it useful. Now, ultimately, I was probably wrong to keep this feature. I should have got rid of it at an early stage. Um, I just stuck with it because uh, it had taken me quite a long time to write the code for it. I was quite uh, keen on the way it used the microcontroller's E squared prom to store the current mode, whether the LED was enabled or disabled. Now, in the end, one of my distributors said, I want this feature removed. It's too much hassle. Uh, writing to people telling them uh, how to switch the LED back on again. And so I wrote for him uh, version 1.3 of the firmware. And here I just bodged in uh, set mode bit zero, which is the bit that determines whether the LED is enabled or not. Set it there and also set it there. Now in the original version of the code, this would have been a BCF, bit clear file, and this would have been a BSF based on the contents of the EE prom, uh, but here it's just been uh, pushed into a, a situation where it's permanently enabled. And this is actually the version of the code that I'm going to open source. So in the open source version, this feature as a, as a default won't be enabled, it won't be available. It's reasonably easy to uh, re-enable it. You just simply change that BSF to a BCF, so if you want to re-enable it and see how it works, you can do that relatively easily. So I think the LED disable mode was my biggest misjudgment. Nothing to do with the circuit design, not really anything to do with the software. The product aesthetics um, are fine, but I just had this desire to include a feature which a lot of people just didn't understand. And I think for good reason, this software switch where you uh, turn the thing on and off during its two second initial boot period 
just doesn't work reliably. So I learned my lesson, probably too late, but there we are. Cheerio.